The only way I'm different now is I don't perform the crimes I used to perform. My heart's still there. I still have no problem hitting you with a baseball bat, but maybe not because you owe me money now. Maybe it's because you're abusing a dog. Former mobster James Giuliani turned his back on a life of crime to dedicate himself to rescuing animals. The New Yorker, who's been behind bars, spent his formative years working for some of America's most infamous crime families. Since I was a kid, I've been around gangsters, but I'm talking about real gangsters, old school gangsters. I hung out with the Gottis for a good 12 years of my life. It was a great experience for me over those years because I became very tight with the family. But his association with the mob took him into a life of crime and violence. I've done everything from robberies, stick-ups, as I used to like to take the drugs actually from the drug dealers. they pull out their wad, I would just take it from them. Basically just strong on them. But by 2003, James's chaotic gangster lifestyle and addictions to drink and drugs had driven him to the brink of suicide. However, after meeting wife Lena, he was introduced to animal rescue and the pair set up a grooming salon and rescue center called the Diamond Collar. Everything's a family here. I've been grooming the same dogs for seven, eight years. Everybody wants to come to the Diamond Collar because they know that James will take care of their dog. Good boy, no. Good boy, Sean. It's okay. Then in 2006, his life was changed forever by an encounter with an abandoned dog, which made him question everything. You know, murder, my mother dying, my father dying, I lost two brothers. I've lost, and I still pursued to go on in that gangster lifestyle. It took a seven pound Shih Tzu that I found 24 hours earlier that died on me a month later to change my life. Don't mind me, man. He, he did something to me that day crushed me and that day just I, I snapped into attention man I was like I can't do this no more. Two years ago James set up Kinos, a no cage shelter for animals which are unable to be rehomed. I got about 42 animals in here that's all I can afford out of pocket right now I can't really go past that because I believe in quality not quantity. Charlie bit a seven-year-old child um, in the face gave him 30 stitches the owner was gonna euthanize Charlie so I took Charlie in my trainer, Vinny, works with Charlie. We all work with Charlie. We had to get Charlie on board. When I was on the street, you know, I needed people. There was never, ever anybody there. I relate with these guys because basically they're dumb. Every morning I get my kiss by every one of them. That's why I'm here all the time. I'm here more than I'm at my own house because they need me more. My animals live quality. They live on beds, they live on couches, they get treats, they get food. They don't live in a cage and get walked for two minutes. That's not quality, my friend. Quality's going to the park like we do every day. And we play and I let them live a good life. That's rescue. Though no longer a gangster, James's tough persona can be an asset when it comes to sticking up for abused animals. Is my temper still there? Yes, but it's directed in a different direction now. Instead of a selfish direction, you know, James beating someone up to take what they got, now James will beat you up and take your dog instead of your wallet. James's past definitely influences the way he does things different because he's hard-headed, he's street smart, <laughs> he just don't give a What's up, Pete? How's my kitty? What's up, girls? Good. Very good. Very good? Very good. You got him adopted already. Yep. Oh, my God. When I was a gangster, I surrounded myself with lawyers. Now I surround myself with, with the best of vets, the best of trainers. I got a different crew now. Look at you, huh? Look at you. You were dying two days ago. Now look at you. Pete, thank you. Thank you as always. James is probably your classic uh, judging a book by its cover. But underneath the, the leather and the sweatsuit, uh, he's probably one of the nicest guys I've ever met. While continuing to work to save his beloved animals, James is thankful for the chance meeting that might just have saved his life. I've done some really bad things, horrible things to people. I need to do this. I need to redeem. I need to clear my conscience for a lot of things. And the only way to do that is to give something back. Something's got to hit you when they hit me. They took my heart. Whatever was over it, they peeled it off and they showed, they showed me how to love again. Without them, I'd be, I'd be in the boneyard.
That's that's depends on the truth. Without them, I wouldn't be here right now. There's no way.